The last time you went on an airplane, did you ever look out the window and think, why does that wing just stay there? Look at the size of it. And on top of that, it's full of fuel, about 68,000 gallons of kerosene fuel. And there's a big engine on it. Why doesn't it drop off in midair? Well, today I'm gonna show you the forces at work that keep that wing, both wings, on the plane. To make your model airplane wing at home, what you're gonna need are some straws, the kind that bend some string, some electrical tape, some gaffer tape, scissors, two two-litre water bottles, and a marker. Now in an airplane, there's our jumbo jet, there's our wings. Now that's a long way out. The wing is a long way out from the body of the plane. You would think that that's a lot of, a lot of gravity pulling that down, a lot of leverage that wants to break that off the body. So there's another wing, obviously, at the other side. And in those wings, both wings together, on a jumbo jet, there's about 68,000 gallons of kerosene fuel. That's pretty heavy, that's a lot of tons. And then, on aircraft, you've got these massive, massive engines. I mean, you could live in these engines. They're huge, several, several tons. And I, I wish I knew the exact weight, but that's a lot of weight going on there. So why, even before it gets in the air, why don't these wings just drop right off? To make our model wing, we're gonna need some drinking straws because we're gonna make some shapes. A square like that, this little shape, and a rectangle like that. What we're gonna do is create sections of the wing bit by bit that will demonstrate these forces. So, the good thing about these, these straws is that they've got a little bit of technology built into them. They've got a right angle corner there, which I can use. So what I do is bend that one over. I'm gonna fit that one inside that one. Obviously, it's the same diameter, so it won't fit. So by slotting and cutting carefully down the center, slotting that down there, I can push one inside the other. So what we're gonna do is make those rectangles, and then that rectangle is pretty strong. It will flex like that, but obviously it will flex like this. So then I'm gonna make a, a shape like that, an hourglass type of shape. Basically, it's a rectangle which is twisted like that. And then a little bit of black tape around the center. Now what I'm gonna do, there's my rectangle that I've made. I'm gonna put that on top there, and then I'm gonna fix on this rectangle, this square, at that end like that and just bind it all up. Now what this does, apart from make the overall structure, this keeps the little straws together so they don't slide out of each other. This is what I'm aiming for and that's the kind of shape I'm going to need. Okay, we're going to construct segments. We're going to construct three separate segments. It's not, it doesn't look like a wing, but what it, what it will demonstrate is how a wing works on the body of a plane. Now the body of the plane we're gonna make out of two two litre water bottles, one inside the other. And using these two plastic bottles, make two black marks like that and cut with a craft knife very carefully, please. Two lines like that, that we can use as part of our structure. Get a length of gaffer tape like this or something similar and secure your piece of work to the table. The principle behind this is that we're gonna make the segments of the wing and each segment of the wing will follow on from the next, like that. Now I need my diagonal, so I'm using this thickness of straw, which is a finer straw, but it's longer than the originals. And I'm putting this on there to brace the structure from there to there, like that. What you might find is when you're making fiddly things like this with tape that seems to have a mind of its own, is to actually start by putting the tape on one piece first before you start to construct something. So I'm gonna put that on that fine straw there, wrap that round and sort of bind it like as if you were making some sort of raft. So now we're starting to get some sort of structure there. Obviously this still moves like this, look. You can see some sort of flex in there. So what I'm suggesting is that that's our compression structure. This bottom part here, look, is a rigid, rigid structure. And the top part is where we're gonna put the, the structure that's in tension. So I've just got the last section to do. So there's the bottom part of it. And now I need some cross bracing. So I've got another rectangle there and I'm just gonna twist it like that and hold it like that. And I need to maintain that shape. So I need to sort of bind it in the center. Okay, so that, that cross bracing then stops it sort of turning into a parallelogram. That makes the whole thing nice and rigid. That's, that's quite a structure. Straws are great. 
So I'm going to fix that onto the end of that there. Now you notice I'm not going to have any more verticals or diagonals. This is going to be the last thing. I'm going to fix it to the plane first of all. There's a body of the plane. There's the wing, but it's still sort of dangling about all over the place. So now I need string. This is my tension. So I'm going to fix this at one end. And now the principle is that we hold all that in tension. So we're going to tape that there nice and tight, tape it to there nice and tight, and then fix it to the body up there. Obviously that's going to twist and bend, so I need another piece of string, and I'll do the same again. And then I'm going to take that through to the body of the plane there. We need a counterweight to that. So we're going to put another wing to balance it on the other side. So we've got our two wing structures there. So the, the theory is that I'm going to pull that out and hold that in tension there. All that weight down there, there's a lot of leverage on that end, is being balanced by all the leverage on, on that end. So that's basically the structure of the plane. Modern architecture is full of this stuff. It's great, you know, steel tubes, cables, all that sort of stuff. And all this began, all this began round about the time of the First World War, really, when flight really took off. And the, the original planes were basically just canvas, bits of wood and wire. If you like airplanes as much as I do, and I know you head squeeze types do, why not check out James May's Q&A on airships? Fantastic. All about this sort of stuff, structures. And then subscribe. Oh!